gastropod. All right, so this here friend is a water boatman. Now there are quite a few uh, bugs and beetles and divers. Um, and this one and the back swimmer often get confused. So I thought I would point out some of the differences. He's got those really beautiful um, or like hind legs sticking out there. Um, so that is generally why people get them mixed up is the boatman and the back swimmer both have those fabulous oars that they paddle about with. The back swimmer, not at all surprisingly, swims on its back, kind of upside down. Um, so a back swimmer, a lot of times they have a white back um, as a nymph, a younger bug, and then as a <laughs> as an adult, they kind of puddle about, um, hanging upside down from the water surface, which is pretty nifty, and they dart through the water column. Um, and that resting behavior is a really great way to identify a back swimmer. Um, the water boatman, which is what we've got here, um, Again, does have those long or like hind legs, but they have a really dramatic pattern that makes everything pop. So I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit on this uh, when I... <laughs> Stop wiggling. If he holds still. There we go. They have yellow and black stripes that are really very stunning. Um, and they look like they're swimming kind of upright. You can see that this is his beautiful back. Um, he's not puddling about upside down like a back swimmer. And like a lot of aquatic insects, this guy is an air breather like you and me. Um, so he carries a little uh, thin film of air on his back. When he comes up to the surface, he'll rest a little and grab some more air and then he'll duck back down underwater. It is pretty hard to tell the distinct species apart. Um, he's more of a family guy than a species guy. So he's family Corixidae. He's like, thankfully my time in the spotlight has concluded. Look at him go. Found this and screamed a little with joy, which it may not look impressive to you right now, but I assure you it's the coolest darn thing. This is a caddisfly larva house. Pull it up on my spoon. Oh, love you, spoon. A good tool. Um, okay, so caddisfly larva, you're not going to be able to see because he's hiding inside this beautiful house that he built all by himself. Or she, I don't know, could be either. I'm going to use he just because that's what we've got going on today. Um, so if you check that out, it looks kind of like a bead, right? There's a hole in the center and then uh, this this diligent little creature has constructed a house um, around a central tube or hole. So the caddisfly itself is hanging out way deep in there. <laughs> but they build this fantastic little house out of whatever's around them. Um, so, you know, if you raise them in a lab, they'll use whatever substrate or whatever's hanging out in the tank with them. Um, so if you fill <laughs> their water with glitter, they will build you a glitter castle. But if you're living in the Vernal Pool at Tanglewood Nature Center, they will build a little house of uh, vegetation and sediment that will help them blend in here. So you can tell, I mean, if you even just compare the foreground to the background, like that's pretty good camouflage. Good job, caddisfly. The larvae are able to hide in their case so they don't get eaten by predators. Um, and then the little larva, as it moves around inside the case, it creates a little bit of a current, um, which helps get oxygen to their, uh, to their gills. Um, a lot of times vernal pools don't have a ton, ton of oxygen because of course the water is still or stagnant and it's not getting churned up. It's not getting oxygen integrated that way. Um, but also there's a lot of vegetation that's biodegrading in there, decomposing, um, and that sometimes can remove some of the oxygen. Um, also, because the water is really shallow and warmer water can, holds less oxygen in it, that uh, can often be another reason why vernal pools are a little uh, oxygen deficient. Um, so when the larva is noodling around in his little case, he's creating a current and getting oxygen to his gills, which is a pretty sweet little tactic, I think. In the log cabin, caddisflies use stems and woody material to make their little houses. And they kind of stack them up and it looks like Lincoln Logs or a log cabin. Pretty darn cool. So that's for the larvae of the Limnophilidae family. The log cabin caddisfly. 
There's the caddisfly larva, he's sticking out of his house, collecting some snacks. He's waving, you guys. Everyone's so friendly today. Wow. Bye, buddy. Gotta get cozy.